I really wish that I had pushed start recording right before you said my mom uses it all the time. Yeah. Well, she does use it all the time. Like she loves to take a picture of me (laughs) and then she'll take the stylus, put a big red circle around my face and send it to me saying, look, I found a bitch. So. No, my mom doesn't do that, uh, but it would be hilarious if she did. (laughs) <laughs> and then do you send the picture back and go, no, that's a son of a bitch. That's a son of a bitch. That would be my There response. it is. The Black Tower Podcast, a place full of sunny beaches. <laughs> Indeed. No, that's a place full of funny job postings that don't pay enough. I mean, sunny beaches? As well. No, indeed. Ah. Oh my god, indeed, the worst fucking job site ever. Sunny, Sunny Beaches sounds like a really depressing like retirement complex home place in like Florida. Yeah, oh, kind of. Yeah. Did you just toss that can? Mm. I yeeted that bitch. Ooh. Listen, sir, I pay a mortgage for all these walls, and I'm going to use all these walls. purpose i want they are my fucking walls my fucking walls that's is how, that what they're used for it, that's how it is that is it is what they are used for you bang against walls that's what you do Certainly but we're can. not here to talk about banging against walls are we you're not are we? is this i mean we might all podcast is this wall bangers podcast i don't think so I mean, it's this definitely is... an on your knees podcast. Oh, nice. Teaser. At least for tonight. Nice if you know, teaser. you know. If you don't know, um, if you don't know, you'll know soon enough. The Wheel of Time TV show is on Amazon Prime for no additional cost. Mm. Other than, you know, obviously buying Amazon Prime. But that's right. That's right. We Prime, are the called. Black Tower podcast. We are a Wheel of Time podcast. And you know us. We are the Mahales of the Black Tower. The one, the only, except no substitutes, the OGs, the the creme de la creme, the goats, the Emmonsfield goat. And I am your sorb on the hill, Josh. <laughs> well. Aaron Lipper goats now. Yeah, that's who, right. Who, who would have thought? Mom, get the camera. Nah. <laughs> I'm your boss on my hill. My name's Andrew. I'm a lot happier and more enthusiastic than it seems like. I'm not really good at vocalizing that. So. And I'm Pretend. scared of our introduction for tonight. It was <laughs> it was a lot. No I don't pressure. know if I can live up to that kind of uh kind of intensity. I'm your your uh, stable Mahal, I guess. <laughs> your Amon Khan Mahal, <laughs> Daniel. Oh, let uh, us tell you that we've run out of ideas for some of the intros sometimes without telling you that we've run out of ideas for some of the intros sometimes. I see, I don't know if that's actually even true. I feel like we actually still have a lot of intro ideas in us. It's just Josh will sometimes just. Sometimes I'll just start down a and just, I don't even know how yeah, I'm gonna finish it. But I'll just keep going. It's the you, <laughs> it's the YouTube trick, you know, where you say, Oh, we've run out of ideas, but you really haven't, so that it lowers expectations. So the ideas you have just come off as better. That's right. Yeah. Make sure you edit that part out or they'll know the tricks to YouTube because nobody ever realizes that. <laughs> and we obviously yeah, are the only not ones to that lie know the tricks to, to our people. I mean, that's probably a good thing. 
Let's let's I mean, not lie. It's just not radical trans. People. It's just not radical transparency. It's clickbait. It's not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's misleading. You assumed radical transparency. Wild mm-hmm. stallions. Also <laughs> known as the sword that is not a sword, Calamon, with its radical transparency. And that's all I'll say about that because we have not spurly learned yet. That is true. Spoiler warning, spoiler warning. We gotta warn us about the spoilers. Speaking oh. of spoilers, if you want to help yourself avoid spoilers, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the blacktowerpod.com. It's not the, it's just it's Black Tower the, Pod. Just com. Black Tower Pod. Yep. Blacktowerpod.com. Blacktowerpod.com. Uh, dot com. Hop on over there, check things out. Uh, enjoy yourself. Our forums are light, which means that you're unlikely to get spoiled. <laughs> and they all have good titles, which means that you're even less likely to get spoiled. So there you go. Um, Morshadi is very useful. He's a very good resource. He's our spoil, our fact checker, Mahal. Uh, and he has been known to answer forum posts or forum questions or things in our uh on our on our website we also do that on occasion uh you can also look at the last five episodes that we've put out including this one on this friday and uh you can also find all of our socials and things like that as well as a chibi for the crystal barista but Instead of talking about the Crystal Barista today, today, we're going to talk about non-spoilers. And the people over at The Great Blight, thegreatblight.com, are doing a great job of no spoilers. They have what is known as a spoiler-free wiki so that you don't get all messed up when you're trying to look up your favorite characters when you're only one book, two book, three book, four book, seven books in the series. See, I'm only one book into my reread. I don't want to get re-spoilered. That's not how that works, but <laughs> if it was, I said you'd be a very smart man. Um, but yeah, it's very intelligent. It is by book instead of just by event uh, and by character. Um, so you can look up Egwene Almira. Um, Egwene Alvir. Almira is naive. Jesus Christ. You Christ. know what? My brain was like, wait Yeah, a no, Hold I on. know. You can look up Egwene <laughs> Alvir and then only look up, you know, oh, I'm only on book three. Like, I feel like she did something in book two that I, like, want to remember. Let me go ahead and look that up. And you can go through and look, oh, book one. No, that's not what I want. Book two. Okay, cool. That's where I'm looking for. See what's around. See what checks out. And you won't get things that are from book five. It won't be like, hey, this person did this thing in uh, chapter four of book two, which calls back in book five. And you'll be like, mother fucker. Like, why (laughs) did I get spoiled on that when I was looking up something completely different? Well, you won't. And that's the best part. I could not have said it better myself. And you did not say it better yourself. Yeah, yeah, I frequently don't. But he did say something very useful that Josh should also look up because he is also representing this remark. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I would talk about what I'm drinking, but that's not the people that we plug this episode. It is not. Who that we plug this episode is what Daniel's already plugged this yep. episode. What Daniel just did. did what what hmm. Daniel just did. That's what we that's what we do. Oh. All right. So now that you've gotten you know all of the places to go to avoid spoilers, we also have to make sure that you avoid spoilers here in this episode, which to make sure that you all get Correct. all of this episode, Josh, press your Discord mute button. All right. <laughs> I'm staring around the screen. What? Where? 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 Yay! Look at me. There we go. 
I know the go. YouTubers could all hear us from the get go, but uh, the Discord, the Discorders, our Patreonians, who uh, are very, very generous and appreciate uh, what we do, and we appreciate what you do. There's just a lot of appreciation back and forth. Uh, they would not have been able to hear you if they were here for the live episode, because that's, that's a privilege true. that you get when you're a Patreon. Only if you, when you're a Patreon. If Check you are free on Tuesdays, come out and see the show yep. or listen to the show. If you're not, and speaking of the YouTubers, um, go ahead and please, if you en- if you wind up enjoying this episode, you don't have to do it now. Feel free to listen to it later. Uh, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed so that you can get notified when our new episodes come out. And uh, let's say you're like, you know what? I can't really watch the video, but I can listen uh, to... Uh, to the sound if you want to go ahead and let it play in the background uh it really does help us out get some of that watch time up for us which is better for the algorithm and the analytics and all that fun stuff so if you want to be so kind to help us out we really appreciate it we also understand if you're like i don't really want to listen to you guys right now so then you can just mute your computer and let us play in the background to help us out anyway yep if you want to be so also true but I guess speaking of kind, so that we can start uh, start with this episode, here is your spoiler warning courtesy of the fantastically lovely Adelona Sedai of North Harbor Podcast. Mm-hmm. Or not, because my stream deck, stream deck just told me to go fuck myself. Oh, shit. No. It thinks voice mod is not running. No, 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 no. no. But... Yes, I am running voice mod. Shut up. I don't think you're actually running. You are currently sitting. Hey, is your refrigerator running? You <laughs> then you better go, go catch, catch it. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Just had to relaunch fucking stream deck. All right, anyway, here you go. This for the warning from Anna Luna. Spoiler warning. This is your official spoiler warning. This episode contains spoilers for all 14 books and the prequel. If you are still listening and you haven't read all these, you want to be spoiled, don't you? You crave it. Getting spoiled without putting in the work? Well, get ready. Here it comes. Ooh, Adelona, you yank. <laughs> All right. Uh, so tonight, topic, fun things. Uh, yet again, we're doing another one of our forever going on and probably will go on forever series that we do. I mean, here. we've only got a couple thousand characters to go through. Yeah, yeah. So we're so close. We're getting close, close to the end of going through all twenty-seven hundred plus characters, named mm-hmm. characters. Yeah. Uh, before we have to switch over and start doing like miscellaneous deckhand number five. Yep. <laughs> and how he's actually a spy for Demandren. I mean, we could do Florian Gelb, I guess. Uh, that's a named character. That's not miscellaneous. Yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I'm anyway, uh, a character that needs very little, if any, introduction. Definitely none if you have read uh, books one and two. If you have watched the first season, and also known as the only season currently of the TV show, we're going to talk about. <laughs> I swear I'm here and I'm like 20% focused on my life. Uh, the rest of my brain is like just playing elevator music for some reason. Um, it happens. But tonight, okay. we're here. Tonight, we're going to. Yeah. Tonight, we're going to talk about Suwon Sanchi. Suwon Sanchi. Shwanshiwanshi. Oh my god. Bravest of the Silver Pike. You know, Clever as a Silver Pike. Strong as the tides. Daughter of the river. Untire you know, and tire of knots. There you go. Hey oh. Truth. Hey, the untied her daddy's knot. That was not very nice. For some reason that's no, actually dirty. it was it was nice that one Look. time. Because she was trying to be nice to him, but then the people all were like, meh, untied knots, unacceptable. 
What's Drag that? Bang. Something happened that I don't understand. I'm going to burn your house down. Okay. Would that not be the best answer? Is that like he actually sends her away to the White Tower and then finds out that somebody was just like, oh, I, I wasn't mad about the magic she was using. Just untied knots? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what self-respecting person has nothing to do water? with has nothing to do with Tyr's long-standing anti-channeling policy, no, but rather no. a really severe case of OCD. Look, guys, yeah. I don't hate channelers. Some of my best friends are channelers, okay? But you know what I can't stand? Them <laughs> fucking untied knots hanging around <laughs> in our city. Tie your knots. I'm my grandma didn't not. tie a knot. She tripped and fell and died. Okay. Actually, you know what would be even better than that is if it was an accident and he sends Swan away, and then the next day somebody comes over and they're like, <laughs> "Hey, the whole village is just to wanted help you to apologize. Uh, there was an accident yesterday. There was uh, <laughs> we were carrying a torch and a lot of hay, and it just." Somebody knocked it over into your house, and so we're all here to help you rebuild. And he's just like, "You mother!" It's like, what? What? What about the? What about the dragon's fame? Oh, fun story. Uh, that's actually not the dragon's fame. It is the flame of Tarvalon, and your door fell off, and we must have put it back up upside down. There Sorry. you go. Uh huh. And it was speaking black of which, because all we had was charcoal. Speaking of which, have you guys actually seen the uh, the post where the guy is like, for all of you saying that I installed my door upside down, it's so that my puppies can look out, oh. you dicks. Oh, oh yeah. I do remember that. He had the, the window up top and everybody was all being all snippety about it. He was like, no, yep. come on. I did this on purpose. I'm not stupid. Yep. Yeah. Oh, let's be honest. There are plenty of people who would absolutely install their door upside down because they were just... Stupid. And I am one of them. Swan Sanche. <laughs> Swan yeah. Sanche. Swan Sanche, I think, is evidence. I'm just going to jump into this with my hot take because as much as I love Swan Sanche, I and and to be to be clear, I love Swan. Sanche. I do. I love her character. Her character is amazing. She is an absolutely brilliant woman. She is a tenacious woman. She is a resilient woman. She is a driven, motivated, powerful woman, and I love everything about her. Except, Except. the fact that, and, and this is one of the things that I hold dearly, and that is one of the biggest failures in leadership. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your, your philosophies are. One of the biggest failures in leadership is dividing your people to keep yourself in power. When you galvanize people against themselves. Now, Swan Sanche did this on purpose because she knew that seven smaller pieces of people going back and forth against each other, squabbling against each other, was more easy to control than a united powerful strong uh white tower and and that's poor leadership she was not a strong leader she was a very skilled politician she was a very skilled maneuverer and very well played played Dias Damar very well but she was not a good leader by any stretch of the imagination and we see this played out in her deposition i'll tell you what i don't care who you are that's failure right there it is 100 percent, absolute complete total failure yeah i don't know if you can actually lay all of that at swan's feet though i feel like that was a thing that had been already present in the tower and i'm not saying that she didn't add to it i'm certainly not saying that uh, and then, of sure. course, Elida was like, hold my beer. But, <laughs> but I will say that, like, I will I say like that I'm not... just kind of <laughs> took over a tower that was already going that way 
and just kept that momentum going that sure. direction which granted again let me let me also be clear agreed that a good leader would course correct they would be able to go ahead and find a way to or or the best leader or at least would be able to, to figure out to a way to still be in power still get what they want still be in control and also uh allow the tower to be less divided um but yeah i i don't know if i necessarily think that that's i agree that she had a problem and that was rand and i think that she <laughs> could have done a better job of going ahead and convincing the entire white tower as a unified front to <clears throat> search for find and support the dragon reborn but given that she knew all of the internal politics i thought i think that she was not wrong in assuming that that was never fucking happening and therefore needing to keep a really big secret <laughs> i mean okay. i i could see her wanting to keep it a secret for for one one simple reason her very short uh, comparative time spent in the tower coming from the Blue Aja, having only worn the shawl for 10 years before she became Armorlin. Right? Mm -hmm. She's going to like barely get into the true nitty gritty of why so many people dislike each other. You can understand it, but absolutely. They're going to, she hasn't, at the time she was raised, she wasn't involved with it long enough to, for lack of a better phrase, rise above the corruption. Yes. Um, and the infighting. And I think Suan carried a lot of her blue Aja ness into her being Amalan. Um, I agree with that. She was yeah. singularly focused on a thing. Yeah. And anything I mean, else that wasn't that thing basically fell by the wayside, which again is why I don't lay the politics of the White Tower at Suan's feet. Mm -hmm. But again, she also was just so blinders. Um, that her brilliance and her tenacity and her ambition and everything like that, which is absolutely one of the cool things that we like about Suan Sanche, um, ended up being a little bit of a handicap to her because she was so singularly focused on that thing that she could not actually be as effective of an Amarillo seat as she would have been if she hadn't had a mission that she was given when she was an accepted from a foretelling. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's also Andrew. got this thing where she's coming in uh, as the Armalin in like 988 NE. Um, so she's she's not very okay. She was born in like what 957 NE, yep. So yes, she's like, correct, what 30, 31 years old, period. Um, worn the shawl for about 10 years at this point, and the Armorlin before her, and then the Armorlin before that, and the Armorlin before that, all kick the bucket while sitting in, in the throne. Not literally, uh, it's sitting on the Armorlin seat, but they, they all died. Um, and I put a lot of this failure uh, at least after the third, at least, on the hall, because they're all like, yeah, no, no, no. This is this is perfectly natural. It's never happened in the history of the White Tower, but this is natural. Um, we know as readers and with all the background knowledge, this was the Black Aja knocking off Armor. Yes. Um, trying to thwart the, the White Tower's uh efforts, uh hidden in the background, because only the Armorlands knew, and then the uh um whatever her name was, I can't remember, starts with A, the Armorland who was there when Guitara had the viewing. Oh. Um Oh, uh, uh ba -ba -da. I keep wanting to say Amathera, and I True. know that's not it. Guitar Moroso was the name of the one who had the retelling Tamara. Tamara, yes, yes. Tamara, Tamara Seekers. Um, so every Armalin knew, uh, Tamara Seekers knew, uh, the keepers of the Chronicles for the Armalins knew, uh, I believe, and then Suan and Moraine. Knew and then presumably, of course, uh, with Moraine knowing, Land knows, um, that kind of stuff. Why uh, would she tell him? Yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah, um, but they know that the dragon's been reborn. Um, 
And so they're, they're, you know, there's this whole search going on for it. So you got like Suwon who's got this trying to have this greater good mentality that there's something bigger than us, but I can't tell anybody else because the yeah. fucking red Aja will go off and try to kill him like they do everybody. Um, and probably me. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah, because like there's many times that like her and Lorraine, and we see it in the TV show, they're talking about, you know, what they're trying to do and that if the Hall ever found out what they were doing, they'd be stilled on the spot. Exactly. And I'm just kind of like, that's a bit of a fucking red flag. Like, <laughs> red flag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I get it, but the thing is, like, you, you're instructed to keep this uh, a secret because you know it's so bad that, like, that Tamara even knew that the tower was so engrossed in politics and infighting that even the knowledge that the potential savior of the world being born would not be used to help prepare the world for the last battle or to galvanize the White Tower together. But instead, it would become a pissing contest between the Ajas of who can find him first and who can control him the best. Um, and I, I do think that Suan know, knows that. And we mm -hmm. see a lot of times, like in her private discussions with people like Moraine or or even at points um, later on in the series, like Egwene, she like reveals a lot of the reason why she acted the way she did. And it was basically like, I was handed an absolute shit sandwich and told that it was a ham sandwich, but it was clearly filled with shit. And I had to try to keep the sandwich together. <laughs> yep. That, that's that's actually not a bad point. Um, and I again, I didn't take into account the fact that you, you've got the Black Aja actively destroying the... It's fucking JFK and Amberlin's out here. No, we I mean, don't. Well, but it, and that's the thing, like, look... Leadership. There is, is no belt that's black Aja. <laughs> there is no black Aja in the White Tower. There is no war in Ba Sing Se <laughs> either. <laughs> um, the Omerlin has invited you to Dragon Mountain. <laughs> the there there is an active war going on that the White Tower doesn't even realize they are participating in. Um, I feel. I might I might have to like it was almost like it was a, a bit. cold war. And there's an no. allegory there for a not open conflict between the forces of light and shadow, <laughs> and not everybody really realizes how fucking terrible it is. I, I and that's the thing is I would I would I would venture a guess to say that the leadership of the White Tower obviously had some inkling of what was going on. Uh leadership did the leadership, Ajas regularly I mean, have drills um, where they hid under their desks? <laughs> you know, because that's what you rocket are you, attacking. Rocket you know, are attacking. It's the most terrifying weapon ever created in the history of man, defeated by a simple school desk. Trust us. Yeah, that's right. No, I, you know, that's that's actually an interesting Rand point. is bail firing the tower. Get under your desks. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Duan has seen as you guys have pointed out she was very very young her and Moraine both were very very young when they by happenstance witnessed the foretelling of Guitara Amoroso Guitara then died and then you had four people in the world who knew of the uh, of the foreteller now my guess would be that the dark one knew about that you know that the that rand was coming back or that the dragon was being reborn and was trying their best to be like no uh, we need leadership we need to cut the head off of the white tower etc 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 so pointing forward you know we talk about swan and the first time we see her in the books uh, excluding new spring is as the Amarillan seat coming to uh, Faldara following the battle at the end of the Eye of the World. Um, and she's coming up to be like, uh, y'all just, which, which I kind of hate because I'm like, I know in the show they were like, they made a real big point to point out that uh, uh, Agalmar was like lord algomar was like no the white tower 
we don't need their help. We are borderlanders. We are proud. We have defended these lands for our... But in That's the book... That's exactly think, how he sounded. It's crazy. It's weird. It, it is true, right? Everybody who read that, like, or, you know, whatever. Or everybody who watched the TV show was, you know, saw that. In the books, uh, Lord Agomar was much more, I think, thoughtful and pensive. And he straight up, if, if I'm not mistaken, straight up said, yeah, we've appealed to the White Tower. We've asked mm -hmm. them to send us Aes Sedai. And the White Tower has basically said that they're too important. Yeah. And that we're borderlanders and we should handle our own shit. And so Agomar kind of has a bad taste in his mouth about inviting Aes Sedai in. And rightfully so, in my opinion. Uh but after the battle, after the battle at the Eye of the World, after Rand absorbs all the pure Sidene at the Eye of the World and floats <laughs> randomly over the Trollocs. Maybe and then it's pure Sidene. Maybe it's maybe. maybe sends it's all the lightnings down to destroy. When, when maybe Rand he's born does with it. Maybe it's the pure Sidene. What, uh, what the Lady Amelisa did in the movies only with, or in the TV show, only without killing everybody around him. No, nope, um, he killed everyone around him. Well, it's just he was also touche, only around Trump. Touche, touche. <laughs> he he killed the people he was supposed to kill. Yes. Um, and then and, and then Swan the Sanchez like, he wasn't. we're coming up here to uh, see what just happened because some shit just went all fucky. She interviews Rand, Matt, Perrin, Egwene, and Nynaeve, and Moraine, and says straight up, "All right." Uh, Nynaeve and Egwene, y'all are on the first boat back to Tar Valon because you guys have some of the best talent that we've ever seen. Um, and I I can't recall specifically, and I mean, like I said, I'm uh in my reread, I am going to we're we're not even to Camelin yet. We just left Whitebridge, so I I'm, I will be there and I will I will reassess at this at that time. But my my understanding is she's like, hey, Rand, Matt, and Perrin. Good job. But she knows they're Taviran and she's like trying to maneuver a way to keep them in her clutches, kind of a thing. And Moraine is like, Swan, this it's him. And Swan's like trying to play it nice, like, oh, yes, these are three ordinary young men with no specialness about them at all. Thank you for your service against the Trollocs. And she, I, I, I like the subtext between Moraine and Swan, even though they've they've painted themselves as enemies. They really have this budding friendship, and they they did a great job budding of that. friendship. It could just still be budding if the deflowering has already happened. Yeah, <laughs> you right? can say that their friendship is. Soft as pillows. But you could I was say just going to say, well, it's funny too because like Maureen and Suan are having like these like kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge conversations around people. And then like Varys just standing in the background and just kind of leans in and is like, one of them's the Dragon Reborn. And they're like, Holy okay, fuck, but for where real, did you right? come from? Fuck off, you spooky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and then like yes, literally okay, like man. Maureen and Suan for a minute are like, we should kill her. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, they really are there. They're like, yeah. yeah. All right. So, one of the things that we actually are somewhat remiss in these episodes to do are to basically run through the characters' accomplishments throughout the story. So, I'm going to take less than five minutes here and just run you through <laughs> the whole thing gamut of what Suan does in the story, full Cliff Notes version. I'm not going to go into just about anything. We will absolutely discuss all of our favorite highlight moments at the end of this, but I am going to take a Give couple of minutes timeline. here. Give and us just, the timeline. Just kick things in. Roll that beautiful <laughs> bean footage. Do that. Right? Here, here's, I want you to do it in the style of, of, of Ace Ventura from Jim, Jim Carrey's Ace Ventura and be like... She was a novice when she witnessed, uh, and then she was raised the Amarillan Sea. 
Yeah, well, first and foremost, I'd have to re- re- rehearse that if I was actually going to do it. Also, I'm not next, terribly familiar next, with Jimmy. For the next back, background breakdown, I want you to do that. But I'm also not really a huge fan of Jim Carrey before a particular time. And Ace Ventura is 100% set within that time of like Ace Ventura and the mask. So like, I don't really want to be compared to that. <sighs> okay, fine. What if I said that, like the Micro Machines guy? I don't even know what you're talking about now. So God, we're just did, did go. I just age myself? Maybe a little. Shit. So, uh, Suwon Sanche, born in tier, uh, ends up going ahead and, according to the TV show, using her powers uh, or using channeling in tier, they are afraid for her life, so they send her away to train at the White Tower. Um, we know that basically when she shows up, uh, it is around the same time as Moraine, Damage Red, and they start being relatively good friends. They are both pretty high up in the power scale as far as the White Tower is concerned. Um, they both rise very quickly through the ranks of the Aes Sedai, are uh, brought up to accepted level fairly quickly, and then before either of them is even 50 years old, which is really quite young for an Aes Sedai, both of them are raised to the shawl. Uh, while they are accepted, they are both privy to a foretelling by Guitar Moroso, who at the time is the Keeper of Chronicles for Tamara, um, who is the red Omerlin? No, she's not red. Sorry, that's totally no. Guitar is not red. Guitar, no, uh, guitar uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow was blue. Tomorrow was blue. That's right. Yes. Um, which is one of the reasons that they're actually there. Tamara is and uh, Guitara are actually trying to convince them to become blue sisters, and they have already basically convinced them of such, and so they are in their sort of inner circle as uh, being people that they can count on because they are likely to choose the blue when they actually become Aes Sedai. They are then raised, they then go on this campaign to find the Dragon Reborn because they are some of the only people who know that they exist, um, and they are actually given this kind of mandate as Tamara's seekers, a few of which uh, there exist in the world, to go find the Dragon Reborn and tie him to the White Tower. So Sanche ends up going and staying in the White Tower while other people end up going in and scouring the world, and she becomes Amarlin's seat. Uh, and basically is running things as far as the search is concerned from the White Tower uh, and um, allowing the people who need the leeway to go ahead and look for the Dragon Reborn to do so. When we hop into the story, she is, as Josh said, traveling to Shinar, traveling to Faldara after the Battle of Tarwin's Gap, um, after Rand has discovered that he really is the Dragon Reborn, and she talks to all of the Emmons Fielders, as well as Moraine and Lan, as well as a number of other people, uh, and gets kind of the lay of the land. She then packs up with her retinue, grabs onto Nynaeve and Egwene, and brings them back to the tower, yells at Moraine, tells her that she's not allowed to come back until she's done something, which is all kind of fake. Uh, and then uh, Moraine goes off to do... Wait, no, does she come go back to the tower at that point? No, Moraine fucks off to do something else, right? Yeah, Moraine, yeah, because she's... Uh... Marine is currently guiding Rand. Is she with the group that goes after the horn? Is Moraine with the group that goes after the horn? I don't remember. No, Moraine she's now. she's at the Stone of Tear with Rand. Bruh, this is way before. Well, that. She shows up, but no, like no, she's not. Yeah, she's um, so anyway. Yeah, because they, no, yeah, they don't even ride with the party because it's. That's whenever like Varen swoops in later on and joins with the party that's been uh, looking that for That is correct, yes. So basically, uh, while they're in Faldara, Padon Fain uh, does his mojo thing, uh, turns a couple of sleeper agents for the shadow to allow a Trolloc attack into the city. Um, they escape with Panon Fane, the Horn of Valir, and the dagger that Matt picked up in Shadar Lagoth. And so a number of people have to go make a hunt for Panon Fane and the Horn of Valir. While that's happening, Suan Sanche and her retinue go back to the tower, uh, and the beginning of Egwene, Nynaeve, and Elaine's training starts. Suan then sits around going ahead and overseeing that until the coup in the tower. 
Uh, she basically sets up uh, Elaine, Nynaeve, and Egwene as her seekers in some ways to root out the Black Aja and then is deposed by Elida Doavrini Roy, Royhan. Um, and still, along the writers of Rohana, right? Um, at this point, she basically is a little listless, so the tower is broken, and the rebels go to Saladar, um, and the loyalists stay in the White Tower, and um, Swan and Liana, with the help of Gawain and Matt, uh, escape the escape Tarvalon, the city, and go out to look for the rebel Aes Sedai. Uh, Suwon, knowing lots of things and being very good at what she does, finds out where they are. But they are set upon by Gareth Bryn because they fuck some shit up on the way because Logan Ablar is with them and he's a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> and so Gareth follows them all the way to Saladar, uh, where she re sort of ups with the Rebel Aes Sedai. Um, they're hanging out. She makes herself useful, even though she's stilled because she has the eyes and ears for the blue Aja, basically. Um, and the Amerlin's uh, network as well, which is actually a, a whole separate entity. Um, and while she's there, Nynaeve is able to heal Loghain of his gentling and Swan and Liana of their uh, stilling though they are at much less power than they were. She also really kind of discovers that she is in love with Gareth Brynn and that he is in love with her uh, and convinces him to go ahead and be the leader of their armies in Saladar. At this point, Egwene finally makes her way to Saladar and they set her up as the sort of scapegoat Omerlin if all of their plans go badly to retake the White Tower. However, they give Suwan Sanche. Uh, charge of teaching her how to be Omerlin. She's like, well, if you're going to be under my charge, you're definitely not going to be some puppet Omerlin. So I'm going to teach you how to be the best goddamn Omerlin there is. And she does. Uh, at which point she travels back with the rebel Aes Sedai to Tarvalon. Uh, the battle for Tarvalon happens. Um, and she is basically reinstated as an Aes Sedai of the Blue Aja in the uh, re- um, unified uh white tower um she is present for the last battle and a number of other important things as far as like the the fields of marilor and and whatnot uh but her basically biggest contribution at the end uh is that uh she and gareth die while taking out a lot of other people because they're bonded at this point and she dies first and he ends up going into a rage and killing a lot of uh, bad guys and then dying himself. Mostly because they didn't pay attention to Min's fucking viewing and stick together during the last battle. I, I like and there that. you go. As that I said, was... that is the Cliff Notes version of what she does. There is so much nuance that I left out of all of that, even though I did go into a couple of things that I probably should have left alone. But there is so much nuance in what she does. Uh, and she does so much cool stuff. But as far as nuts and bolts are concerned, there you go. It was a little more than five minutes because I got distracted with a couple of facts that I didn't realize I didn't know. <laughs> I No, I like that. We have a, We have a pretty good timeline there. I think one of just kind of going back to the beginning and we talked about uh so swan shows up she talks about uh she she interviews the boys she interviews moraine she interviews Egwene and Nynaeve, and she's like holy shit these guys are powerful um she recognizes if i'm not mistaken she's also got the talent to see taviran i believe she do i don't no keep going with your thought uh and i'll look it yeah, up yeah the so she she of course she was able to get tipped off by moraine and it says basically hey this guy is the dragon reborn he can channel uh andrew i do not have your audio because i had it muted so that ah. was nice uh but yeah she has the minor talent of being able to of seeing and recognizing to 
In her eyes, the Tiberian was accompanied or surrounded by a glow proportional to the strength with which he or she was central to the weaving of the pattern. Right, which is why when she looked up on top of the wall and saw Rand, it was a blazingness. Rand, well, I, I, I do love. I fucking love that. What? Those two. So, what, so what, the two what, times we're not that talking about low gain looking at Rand on the wall. So I never no. saw Rand on the wall. Yes, she did. Oh, she uh, absolutely did. Dara, different yeah. wall. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Different. So yeah, Logan, she never saw him on the Camelin wall. Logan's in a cage <laughs> for the crime of going ahead and claiming to be the Dragon Reborn when he's not. And he gets like captured and he gets paraded through Camelin. Uh, and he sees Rand sitting on a on a wall like with a relatively good view of his procession. And he sees this blazing sun and he just goes, well, shit. I thought right. I was cute uh, and starts <laughs> laughing his ass off. Uh, and then, of course, we have the same type of thing happen in Faldara when Rand is doing everything and anything he can to avoid the uh, Amarlin seat. She just like looks over at one of the walls that he's like trying to sneak across and is like, that's the Dragon Reborn right there. That that motherfucker right there. That's the Dragon Reborn. I got to talk to that guy. Don't let that guy leave. Like it's hilarious. <laughs> no, so the the uh the interesting thing uh with with Swan here in in the 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 two bits that I really love is you know we have the benefit as the readers of seeing Moraine dealing with two rivers stubbornness for an entire book. And Moraine's about ready to tear her out. She's just like all of the Aes Sedai testing could not prepare me for how stupidly stubborn these assholes are. Um, and then Lan, who's been teaching Rand how to use the sword, um, he's kind of been a father figure as well. You know, hey, this is how the world is. Uh, you know, I know you've had a quiet life in the two rivers. Um we get our fun sword form, which is not really a sword form. Cat crosses the courtyard uh, because Lan basically says, hey, listen, you're about to go in and meet the Amarlin seat. You're a man. You must address her as a man. And he kind of gives Rand a little bit of a, a heads up and says, look, you cannot walk in there. As this... <laughs> Sheep herder. yeah or they will eat you alive he walks in he's got these things you know he starts you know rand is you know oh hello mother she, he bows he does the proper things she asks him a few questions rand is like yeah no screw that not doing that homie and she's like man taught I love, you well and he's like god damn it i love I, and i was just like i love swan kind of like gets real annoyed and looks at Moraine and Moraine looks at Lan and Lan's like I didn't do anything what? I didn't do anything what? I don't know what? what are you talking about? He's just stubborn stubborn wolfhead from the two rivers dude bro not me sorry <laughs> and uh, Rand walks out of there and Lan is like good job buddy like he doesn't say good job buddy but he like stone faces it yep and, uh, and then the I next there's also a point in that meeting where she's basically like, like it or not, you're the dragon reborn. And he's like, I will not be your puppet. And she's like, yeah, we don't want you to, but if you're not going to do the dragon reborn <laughs> thing, we might as well kill you right here. And Rand goes, wait, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> dragon, dragon reborn, you say. Hmm, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Tell me more about this dragon re re re, re bo boar. Am I saying re, that correct? De Rorn? Gra Gray Dawn? What's that? Well, I also love how again this is like the second or third time he's heard this because Moraine's like regularly like, hey, you gotta you gotta be the guy or I'm like have to kill you. And he's like, bruh, that's not even a threat anymore. Like, seriously, get out of my face. He's only had like now like true serious almost one on one interactions with two Aes Sedai, right. and they have both said, "Do what you're meant to do, or I will kill you." Right yep. though, I will. And we kill wonder you why he spends the a shadow has a chance to get. <laughs> and we wonder why he spends a good portion, a good part of the rest of the entire series, not really caring for Aes Sedai that much. Do we wonder that? I mean, at Do least we? up until the box. 
And well, and Alana. Oh, box. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Well, I, I tell love, you, so but it never happened under Suan. You have all of this. You, you have say all that. Of this. <laughs> and and the, all the things happen, everything happens, and Swan Sanchez carting Eve, Egwene and Nynaeve in a boat down to Tarvalon to continue their training as Aes Sedai. And at one point in time, Swan is like, oh, hello, I have agreed to take over your lessons. She uses some like BS excuse that uh, uh, we're running short on Aes Sedai, so I, I will, I will uh, tend to your lessons today. Um, but what she really means is we've never seen novices with your strength and your potential. Not never. So I want but... to gauge your potential. And yeah. Swan Sanche, I'm going to say pulls a Cad Swain because Cad Swain has been around a lot longer than Swan Sanche. But Swan Sanche walks in and immediately starts pissing Nynaeve off. Immediately starts pissing Nynaeve off. She starts getting under her skin, poking and prodding, and basically just saying all the things she know she knows is going to get a reaction out of Nynaeve. Nynaeve pushes Swan Sanche up against the wall with a weave of air that she just witnessed. And Swan is like, they told me you were strong. I didn't realize how strong. And also that you could learn a weave just by seeing it done. And at this point in time, Nynaeve isn't even consciously aware of seeing the weaves. Mm -hmm. And so Swan Sanche, in order to escape Nynaeve's uh, weaves of air, has to like put a shield around Nynaeve. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, which yeah, she did it as like a humbling thing. Like, yes, that's what she does to get out of it. But she like she's impressed by what Nynaeve can do. And she says right, this much. Yes. it is impressive. And she also then says, she's like, but they also told me that you're stubborn and could stand to learn uh, a lot. Yes. yes. Well, and then she and slams the shield yeah. in between Nynaeve and Sidair and literally tells her, like, don't confuse your strength with talent. No matter how strong you are, you can still be vested easily. And so, like, Which in that same moment that, like, she, she move, like, but also like, angers the shit out of uh, Nynaeve. As much as Nynaeve begrudgingly hates to admit it, there's a bit of respect um, in how she thinks of Suwon oh, after yeah. that. Um, well, and, I mean, oh, she yeah. literally did just humble her ass. So, mm -hmm. right. I mean, you got to take you down a peg or two. Like that's 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 a natural part of learning. You know, it's like the wait. Whole Nynaeve's problem. getting pegged. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna show you why they call me Peggy Hill. It's like it's like the old Chinese proverb goes: If your bowl is already full, what more can you receive? You know, like it, he's nuts. It, he's nuts. If you're the Love smartest it. person in the room, go to a different room. That's right. And so, and so you've got, you've got, and you've got an amazing bit of foreshadowing here for Swan Sanche as well, because she straight up says, it doesn't matter how powerful you are, you can be bested. And it's like, And, and yeah. you don't see it at the time because at the time we're like book two like whoa Swan Sanche she's a real bad bitch and she is like don't get me wrong she is that this woman has mad skills I, I just think she's a poor leader I mean she's she's really good at um I think she embodies the tenets of of manipulation and coercion that the Aes Sedai strive to be able to use um, because Suan, when pushed or, or, or focused on a goal, rarely fails to at least make headway towards that goal. And mm -hmm. she has people moving in directions to benefit her and the tower and their goal of searching for the dragon reborn, with very few, if any of them, really sitting there questioning it. Matter of fact, it takes uh, Elida 
how long to convince other sisters and then to convince uh, sitters uh, in the hall that Suwon has breached tower law. Right. And even then, the most most of the sitters that are there saying like, yeah, no, we need to we need to talk about this. Don't they still don't truly believe it. They're just too intimidated by Elida and her side to say no. Yeah. Which, I mean, Swan Sanche, credit where credit is due, has been an absolute force of nature. Has been an absolute hurricane in the White Tower. So yeah. when you start talking about uh, Hurricane Sanche. Hurricane Sanche. When you start talking about building a case that is willing to go up against Juan Sanche, like Elida definitely played the dangerous game, like a hundred percent, and just barely squeaked out. Like just ba- like they even talk about this later on in the series again and again and again about how she was lawfully raised quote unquote but only by the barest letter of the law so like that even says that even speaks to her intimidation factor i guess it were as a leader which again i don't necessarily think was was good but yeah yeah i mean so like this is where the the too secretive part of of suan uh, worked heavily against her because it wasn't that like Elida made up some shit and got her deposed. Like what Elida accused right. Suan of, Suan absolutely did do. Yep, she knew she had information of the Dragon Reborn, had information of the Black Aja, and was sending novices out to do things that even I Sedai rarely would be sent to do, and hit it all. Yes. From not just the White Tower and in Mass, but the Hall, um, mm-hmm. with her and um and Leanne, Liana, whatever. Um. So as ill motivated as Elida was, it's one of those situations where, by letter of law, Elida was mm-hmm. completely in the right. Correct. Yes. Now, spirit of the law is definitely something that you can make another argument for because <laughs> there is still the thing where even though she was now Amarlin herself, she still was sworn by another Amarlin to keep mm-hmm. this a secret. And I don't remember seeing anything about uh, Tower Law that says that when an Amarlin dies or mm-hmm. retires... Their mandates. No yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it never goes away. But then again, she also then had the power and authority for sure to say we don't have to keep this a secret. Yes. Um, and this was uh one of the things that I think is a very slippery slope, and oftentimes is not a good move for mo for almost any leader, and that is taking your own counsel as better than the counsel of any of those around you. Basically saying, I know what's best. I'm going to do what I think is best, regardless of what that means to everybody else. Mm-hmm. And the vast majority of times that happens, uh, even in our own history, it has generally disastrous consequences. Yes. Yeah. And this is a fine balance to walk, too, because how do you know where to say, ah, yes, previous generation wisdom? I will stand on your shoulders and we will build a better tomorrow because of what you've learned. How how do you divide the wisdom of previous generations from the bias of previous generations? And I think this is where Swan kind of loses the plot. Because she obviously learned very, very well from her predecessors. She learned very, very well. And she was also very naturally skilled when it comes to you know political maneuvering and things of that nature but when it comes to filtering out those negative that negative bias that 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 need to have control of the situation 
she didn't do a great job. She just sort of embraced it and went well, along with it, which, you know, there's a whole conversation to be had about that because yes, our, our, the older generations have wisdom to offer us. They, they've been there. They've learned those lessons. They've made those mistakes. But at what point in time do we say, hey, this is, you know, thank you. I have learned these things from you. I don't want to absorb those things as a part of who I want to be. And Swan didn't make that decision. She went, cool. I love it. This is what's going to keep me in power. This is what's going to keep me in control. And I can even kind of empathize with her situation because she she is one of the few people in the world who knows the end is near and knows for a fact that if she starts advertising it, that's it. Nothing's nothing's going to happen. The White Tower is going to be too fragmented to be able to mount any sort of reasonable uh, opposition. It's, it's kind of funny, too, because you kind of get a little bit of the this like the infamous Confucian uh, proverb of those who take measures to avoid their fate often cause it. And yes. in her efforts to maintain power, stability, and peace in the White Tower, she loses all power. Uh, she destroys all peace and completely fractures the tower. I, if you have to lay the fracturing of the White Tower at a single person's feet, it lays at the feet of Suwon Sanji. Because I, this this one event, this one secret, was the spark that set off the powder keg that was all of that infighting and hatred amongst the Aja. And so oh. you wound up with these factions that really supported Suan Sanjay, namely the Blue Aja, which just goes to show how much she never let go of being Blue Aja, like she should have, and how much mm. they also never let go of the Amulet being Blue Aja, like they should have. <laughs> uh, and then you have open conflict in the White Tower, and it's not just a couple skirmishes here. There are warders killing warders, Aes Sedai killing Aes Sedai. It is full-on carnage that that leaves the White Tower itself physically tattered and burned. Well, not, obviously not completely burned down, but... Uh, and it results in the expulsion of an entire Aja, all because yep. you kept the biggest secret because you almost, you know, laterally decided that this was what had to be done and what needed to be done. I, I would even say it's more than just the one secret, though. I would say she wielded secrets like tom marilyn wielded knives but it you, you had scenarios in which it, that doesn't need to be a secret you pulled but she them was out like and taught, yeah man. but it'll yeah tom from dragon mount have you seen that man with some knives Woof. scary just scary uh, <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah, no, it's a, it's an entire culture. It's an entire series of decisions, series of small decisions that you think in the moment, hey, we made the right decision, right? Yeah, of course, that's the best decision to make in the moment. Cool. Um, as which, as we see, is a recurring theme in this book series. Um, so Elida comes up. She still, you know, she deposes Swan Sanche, and stills Swan and Leanne and basically says not only have we stilled you but we're going to give you the peaceful death and execute you she convinces uh no she doesn't convince anyone Min helps her Min helps her and Leanne and Loghain mm -hmm. and because and, and Min you know well, Laris and well, La well they convince Laris Min helps because Min knows that A, Loghain still has a crown of glory. Mm -hmm. B, Swan and Leanne are not done. Mm -hmm. Like it's, and so she helps them out. And eventually, uh, Gawain, who sided with Elida, because, you know, Gawain's just so smart. Uh, Gawain stops them at the bridge. They convince Gawain to let them go. Um, we're pretty no, I said sure. Gawain never did anything good. Uh, I take it back. He did this. Good. He did this. He he had one moment of clarity. He let them go. He could have turned them in. They would have been instantly killed. 
Um, he let them go. And in the 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 interesting thing, the the thing that I speak, the thing that I think speaks volumes as to Swan's character is gentling and stilling is essentially a death sentence. Can you survive it? Yes. Do people survive it? Almost never. Swan Sanche is so motivated that she was able to fill that void in her life with revenge. Like with the, the very thought of this isn't over until I have my revenge. And I think I, you know, we can have a debate on whether or not that's a healthy <laughs> reason to keep going, but I'm going to say it right now, if it keeps your heart beating and if it keeps you stepping forward and if it keeps you breathing, hundred percent, embrace it, go right into it. And I know there are star Wars fans out there who will tell me that that is the path to the dark side and I'm sitting here right now saying we're in Wheel of Time land right now. So, And I'm sitting here saying, have I ever told you the story of Darth Plagueis the Wise? <laughs> That's right. It's not a story the Aes Sedai would have taught you. <laughs> it's not a story you'd hear from an Aes Sedai. All um, right. <clears throat> anything else that we want to specifically talk about about swan before we uh oh, pop into we sort of last thoughts the surface right it's true i mean again she does a lot of stuff she is a lot of people she lives a lot of lives i i feel like i feel like for my final thoughts i i just want to say once again that i i really admire swan sanche as a person that her her moral turpitude is unbreakable and that's not to say that i agree or disagree with the motivation behind said moral turpitude but the fact that it is so strong the the woman is tenacious the woman is powerful and there's just simply no denying that um could she have learned some lessons from the failures of the past i think so um but again hindsight's 2020 what mistakes am i making right now that my parents warned me about <laughs> and i'm gonna call my dad tomorrow and be like yeah dad yeah remember that thing you told me not to do well i did it and he's gonna go you're you're a dumbass aren't you and i'm gonna say yeah dad yeah dad i'm a dumbass and it's called eating your humble pie don't forget to eat a slice of humble pie every once in a while because it's good for you but swan great character uh story wouldn't have happened without her straight up 100 percent she is the shoulders that Egwene stood upon that united and led the White Tower to a successful result. And Egwene, because of her diverse training, was able to learn from the mistakes that Swan made. And, and we even get pieces of this when Egwene says, oh, we're going to do this. And Swan goes, oh, why? And Egwene says, because it's the right thing to do. And Swan's like, Oh yeah, good job. Okay, you yeah, know, no, you good. You right, you right. And so overall, like I said, love the character. She's brilliant. She's wonderful. And what makes her brilliant and wonderful is that she's flawed, just like the rest of us. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go next. Um, the character overall, uh, start to finish of the series, I, I do like the character so on. Um as far as like how she's written uh as like an individual like we often talk about characters whether we like them or not i don't like her until saladar uh, and even then it's a little while in saladar before i'm like okay there you go now you're not being such a, a dumb dumb um because she has to go completely counter to everything she tried to do in, uh, before the start of the series and at the start of the series um you know she's got a fair amount of power she was not by any stretch a weak Aes Sedai I mean she was power rank 13 on the little number rank scale uh before being stilled uh which is not anything to sneeze at that's pretty strong um she was exceptionally gifted at getting through training she was exceptionally gifted at the the politicking and the administration of tower she was like Josh said earlier she was a, very much a born leader 
But the problem that so many born leaders run into was hubris. And that is what ultimately, I think, clouded Suan's judgment about that. And uh, I mean, we can always throw in a little bit of blame to the Black Aja, because why not? They deserve to blame for just about everything, uh, including global warming. But um, I know they're all sitting out there with carbofluorocarbons. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's directly her actions had a direct and massive uh, influence on uh, the White Tower schism happening in the first place. It wasn't solely her fault by any stretch. Uh, but again, it's one of those things, gun to your head, you have to pick the one person to lay the biggest blame at, and it can't be just the catch-all. It was the dark one, Suan Sanjay. But she spends the rest of the series dealing with the problems that she had that made her make those erroneous decisions, you know, because um, she never had, like, a bad, like, goal in mind. She didn't want the tower to be divided. She didn't want to keep secrets from everybody. She did what she felt she had to do, and there, there's a certain amount of nobility in that, but uh, as she learns later on, there's more nobility in learning how to be vulnerable and open and share that with people and have some people to actually bounce things off of so that Egwene can go, no, Suan, we're not fucking doing that. That's horrible, um, like she does. But uh, later series, uh, Suan. Can we was... do just a little murder? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. She figured out how to stop somebody's um, heart. She, she was like one of the only people we see in the series that knows how to kill using healing, but literally just slowing your heart true. to a stop. True. Um, which that is mother. I want to do a little light treason. <laughs> <laughs> just a little blood bending. A little bit. Um, just a bit. But I, I really like watching Suan row over the rest of the series because she no longer has the you got to listen to me because I'm a super strong Aes Sedai to work with. She no longer has the positional authority of being the Omerlin. Um, She, for a while, lost her, her network of, of uh, eyes and ears and she gains it back um, once she's back around the Saladar Aes Sedai. But without her having the power and position to effectively use that information, she is now required to share her secrets with some, at least one other person uh, so they can be used for the betterment. And I think she slowly realizes that, hey, actually talking about this stuff with somebody else, rather than just unilaterally deciding what's best for the, I don't know, entirety of humanity from my perspective, <laughs> uh, works out. And by the end, uh, Suwon, I think she grows into being a very... A very lovable, very well-rounded uh, character. Uh, it is pretty heartwarming to see her with Gareth's friend. It's pretty funny most of the time. And uh, I think she got one of the most um, respectful kind of deaths that we see in the series. It's not this big, long, drawn-out thing. It's, you know, men chastising her for like, hey, I, I gave you the formula to stay alive. And so one's like, right. well, I kind of did it, but, you know, I, I think we're okay. And then turns around and it, and then she's gone. But they were not okay. Yeah. Screw well, it. I bet you're wondering how I got saying. here. Yeah. <laughs> just the outline of Suan just in a fireball. Like, uh, what was her name? Envy from Full Metal Alchemist? Yes. Roy Was that, what happens, to, <laughs> was that what happens to Gareth? Does he get combined with a dog? And now I'm sad. <laughs> You son of a bitch. It's your turn, Daniel. What are your final thoughts? Uh, those were my final thoughts. No, I'm just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to leave you with that bit of emotion. What's your trauma? final thoughts? Just It's just Gareth Brain going, Suan? Yes, indeed. No, I uh, I respect Suan Sanche. I do. I think that she has a lot going for her. But again, part of it is that she min-maxes. Suwan is absolutely a min-maxer. And so she has intelligence, but not wisdom. Or charisma, but not, you know, actual people skills. Um, and, and so she's running around doing sort of all the right things. And none of them are actually the right things because she can't actually ever get a full picture of what's going on. And again... A lot of that can be laid at other people's feet. It's not just her being bad at this. 
she's actually quite good at it. Her network is one of the best networks in the world. She is willing to admit that there is a black Aja and try to do something about them, things like that. But again, she is the captain of a very large ship. And making any turns or maneuvers in that ship is very difficult to do. Uh, now, does she try on occasion? Absolutely. But she's also way too happy to go ahead and let the ship float in a particular direction. Um, and as I, I, I completely agree with Andrew in terms of the fact that when she actually gets humbled and realizes there were a lot of things that she did not know, she does sit down and go, maybe I have <laughs> actually been wrong. Maybe I have actually been doing things incorrectly. I was so focused on whether I could that I sometimes didn't think about whether I should. Um, and I do really respect that out of her. Um, now, again, there's a lot of things that I don't love. As stated, she wields secrets so deftly. But again, you wield secrets enough, you're going to get cut with one. Um she makes a lot of mistakes. She absolutely goes ahead and is very confident in her own ability that gets her trapped into being a dumbass <laughs> on multiple <laughs> occasions. And again, I mean, it's one of those things where I can't fully get behind her because she really does kind of stand there at least a few times and go, my moral compass is really kind of fucked, guys. So I'm really glad you're here to help me stay on the straight and narrow. And you're like, you're terrifying. Stop it. Not like, only, but she only even says that to manipulate people. No, I know. That's also true. Anyway, but yeah, so I I think that she's a very well written character and I very much appreciate her place in the story. Uh, there are definitely parts of the story where I want to throw the book out the window because I'm like, Swan, I swear to God, if you make this choice. And then she does. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm out. I'm over it. I'm super over it. Yeah. Um, but overall, again, I do very much appreciate her place in the series uh, as the things that she brings to the story. And I think that Robert Jordan was very smart in writing her. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching upon our YouTube -uals. Uh Don't forget that in July comes WatCon. And don't forget that in October comes the Gathering Madness. And I promise you, you're not going to want to miss this one. All right? Indeed. You didn't want to miss the other ones either. But you really don't want to miss this one. It's going to be amazing. So thank you for being here. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for being amazing. Thank you for joining us for this week's weekly dose of taint. And we hope that you leave here feeling just a wee bit more insane than you were when you first started. And from all of us here at the Black Tower, I have been your Sorov on the Hill, Josh. I have been your Bajan Mahir, Andrew. And I have been your Amon Khan Mahir. <laughs> Wait, shoot. Oh, man. Always screw that up. Your Amon Khan Mahir, Daniel. Oh, and again, for wine. all of us here at the Black Tower Podcast, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. We hope that you had a great time. We definitely did. We hope that you're having a great morning. And in case we don't see you again, Good afternoon, good evening, Always and good night. Running the show. In the tower, you can bring your pain. In the tower, you can feel the strain. You've been having so much trouble just fitting.